Hi everyone, and welcome to the 180 Markets Weekly Wrap. It's just me this week, so I'll have to speak a bit like Greg and myself as well. Well friends, it's been an interesting week at 180 Markets. Globally, the markets have gone a bit sideways. Gold, lithium, uranium, everything that went up last week is in a bit of a holding pattern at the moment. We won't complain because there is quite a bit of volume around and the smaller stuff does have some movers. There weren't as many placements this week, but there were a few real highlights of 180 markets. Let's take a look at the screen. Thanks, Sean. Let's take a look at the 180 markets platform. LTEC, ATC, we placed a shortfall at four cents. Each share came with a free one for two ATCOC. Looks pretty good at this point. Dexas, DXI, um, they raised money at $2.75. Uh, they got a massive market cap and um, someone actually told me before the wrap that I should have had a look. Genman, G-E-N, Serial Razor, again, they just raised six months ago. Now they raised at five cents. The last raise was at double that. Things have not gone to plan, but they've got a plan. So hopefully it picks up a bit. LV1, I'm not mentioning that. Don't zero us, please. AQC, Australian Pacific Coal. They did a raise at a big discount. It was 28% of the price before it closed. Uh, they ended up taking in 20 million. Let's take a look at what we got live. There's not a lot at the moment. ADS, um, this one has unfortunately um, not been a great performer. I remember taking in their last raise at 0.3. I don't think I'm going to take again. EXL, uh, they raised early in the week uh, at a small discount. Let's take a look at the charts. FHE had a terrible week again. This one has come down from almost 60 cents to 12 cents now. Um, what was pleasing to see is that the broker who raised money last cancelled the second tranche. So um, there were a lot of people that were hoping that that would happen and um, lucky it did. All right, um, as you can see, Greg is not in today. So um, we've got Junior here. All right, Brad. Give us something on the oil front. Thanks, Sean. Yes, as you mentioned, not a lot of news this week, but oil prices did go up 5% because the war has been escalating in the Middle East. If we look at some of the bigger caps like Woodside, WGS, and Santos, they're up quite a bit. However, if we go down to the smaller end of town, like TEG and PCL, as well as HZN and OEL, they aren't moving. And this is something that we have seen as a trend in the last few weeks with lithium last week and a couple of other commodities. And something to look out for in the next couple of weeks is if there is obviously a lot of talk about Iran getting bombed and also their nuclear power plants in particular, that might see a bit of, I guess, a price rise in the uranium price. So it is something to watch out for. So, son, son, what, what needs to happen uh, for the smaller ones to move? What do you think? What are you waiting for? Well, obviously, it's going to be a market theme. We're going to have to see a lot of stuff in the US, particularly on the Russell being moved up, and that being translated down here into the small end town over here as well. Thanks, Brad. All right, some other movers this week. Uh, we got this morning H2G. Good to see them up. Uh, they're trading at 0.6. Last night, they announced a $1.5 million hydrogen storage system with Telstra. Uh, we've got WCN up as well. They're uh, trading at 2.2. They announced some large-scale copper discovery at their Ray project. And uh, SYR had a pretty big week. It's down today. But um, if we look at the chart here, it's bounced from lows. Um, it's um, hit a high of 34 cents yesterday. Uh, so a lot of movement then. Um SYR, I think a lot of traders are waiting for it um, to, to just reach a new level and then it can be off to the races.
All right, Ariella, you want to talk about Orbital Corporation. Look at that chart. Yeah, that's right. So this week on Tuesday, they had some pretty exciting news that they expanded their contract with DSO National Laboratories by $3.5 million. And this is a Singapore customer that will now bring the total contract to $7.05 million. Uh, the contract covers UAV engine deliveries between October 2024 and May 2026. And the company does focus on drone tech, um, which is obviously very prevalent in today's day and age with strong growth in the military drone tech sector. Awesome. So, what about LM8? Tell us about it. Yeah, so LM8 on Tuesday also surged up 40%, hitting a high of 24 and a half cents after some strong drill results at the Lady Herial project. Uh, this featured an intercept of 23 metres at 16.61 gold grams per tonne, which included six metres at 62.47 grams per tonne, which is their best result received to date. They are going to try to fast track um, the drilling so that they can start their open pit evaluations, which is very exciting. The stock has held up well this week, so hopefully more results, positive results to come. Well done. That sounds great. Thanks, Ariella. Hug Sameach to all our friends out there. Have a great weekend, everyone. Hopefully next week is another great week. Bye-bye. <laughs>